top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day. Take my glasses off. All right, beautiful people. It is Monday, June the 1st, 2020. I can't believe it. We already in June, y'all. We are in June, and it seems like all hell is breaking loose across this earth today. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get in the reading. We are reading Judah 13, 14, and 15. Remember, yesterday we read over 13 because I just didn't want to leave you hanging right there, but we're going to actually do it again today. So, And that will actually be... Mm, we're going to do add 16. 13, 14, 15, and 16. Because 16 is the last chapter. And I don't want to leave that one hanging out there. So let's go ahead and get started. Sawabona, yeah, yeah. Yes. Good morning, everybody. All right, y'all. Judah chapter 13. Now, when evening was come, his servants made haste to depart. And Bogoa shut his tent without and dismissed the waiters from the presence of his Lord. And they went to their beds, for they were all weary, because the feast had been long. And Judith was left alone in the tent, and the hollow furnace lying alone upon his bed, for he was filled with wine. Now Judith had commanded her maid to stand without her bedchamber and to wait for her coming forth, as she did daily. And as she would go forth to her prayers, and she spoke to Bogaz, going to the same... Go, I'm sorry. And she spoke to Bogoes according to the same purpose. So all went forth, and none was left in the bedchamber, neither little nor great. Then Judah, standing by his bed, said in her heart, O Yahuwah, Elohim of all power, look at this present upon the works of my hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. For now is the time to help your inheritance and to execute your enterprise to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. Then she came to the pillar of the bed, which was at hollow furnace's head, and took down his falcon from thence, and approached to his bed, and took hold of the hair of his head, and said, Strengthen me, O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, this day. And she smote twice upon his neck with all her might, and she took away his head from him, and tumbled his body down from the bed, and pulled down the canopy from the pillars, and immediately after she went forth, and gave hollow furnace head to her maid. And she said, put it in her bag of meat. So they two went together according to their custom unto prayer. And when they passed the camp, they they compassed the valley and went up to the mountain of Beulah and came to the gates thereof. They went to prayer with his head in a bag of meat, y'all, like everything was going on as normal. Then said Judith afar off to the watchman at the gate, open, open now the gate. Elohim, even our Elohim is with us to show us his power yet in Jerusalem and his forces against the enemy as he has even done this day. Now when the men of her city heard her voice, they made haste to go down to the gate of their city and they called the elders of the city and then they ran all together, both small and great, for it was strange unto them that she was come. So they opened the gate and received them and made a fire for light and stood round about them. Then she said to them with a loud voice, Praise, praise, Elohim, praise, Elohim. For I say he has not taken away his mercy from the house of Israel, but has destroyed our enemies by, by my hands this night. So she took the head out of the bag and showed it, and said unto them, Behold, the head of Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Asher, and behold the canopy wherein he did lie in his drunkenness, and Judah has smitten him by the hand of a woman. As Yahuwah lives, who has kept me in my way that I went, my countenance has deceived him to his own destruction, and yet he has not committed sin with me to defile and shame me. She prayed for this before she actually went in and asked Yahuwah to bless her so that her beauty would deceive him so she could get closer. And when she got close enough to the enemy and while he was comfortable and he was drunk and, and had no fear of her, she completely cut off his head and dropped it in her bag of meat, took it back home, A. Yahuwah has given this victory to the kingdom of Judah by the hand of a woman. Then all the people were wonderfully astonished and bowed themselves and worshipped Elohim and said with one accord, Blessed be you, O Eloheinu, which has this day brought to naught the enemies of your people. Oh, <clears throat> let me bring something else out that I brought out yesterday too. And also, when she deceived him with her beauty, 
She didn't have to lay with him because Yahuwah set it up so much so, for one, she wasn't going to sleep with him in the first place. But Yahuwah allowed him to get drunk. Remember yesterday, it said he had drunk more wine than he had ever drunk it in his entire life. This was so that Yahuwah could hand him over into Judah's hand and she would not be defiled. O Eloheinu, which has this day brought to naught the enemies of your people, then said Isaiah unto her, O daughter, blessed are you of El Elyon above all the women upon the earth, and blessed be Yahuwah Elohim, which has created the heavens and the earth, which has directed you to the cutting off of the head of the chief of our enemies. For this, your confidence shall not depart from the heart of men, which remember the power of Elohim forever. And Elohim turned these things to you, for your for a perpetual praise to visit you in good things because you have not spared your life for the affliction of our nation but have revenged our ruin walking a straight way before our Elohim and all the people said so be it so be it Yahuwah champions our cause when we walk holy before him when we walk holy before him and we live righteous lives he can use us because there can be no reproach that can come against us in what he uses us for <clears throat> and he calls a great uh, 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 a great win for the kingdom of Judah that day by one woman chapter 14 then Judah said unto them hear me now my brethren and take this head and hang it upon the highest place of your walls and so soon as the morning shall appear and the sun shall come forth from upon the earth take ye every one his weapons and go forth every valiant man out of the city and set ye a captain over them as though ye would go down into the field toward the watch of asher but go not down then they shall take their armor and shall go into their camp and raise up the captains of the army of Asher and shall run to the tent of Holofernes, but shall not find him. Then fear shall fall upon them and they shall flee before your face. So ye and all the inhabitants of the coast of Israel shall pursue them and overthrow them as they go. But before ye do these things, call me Achor the Ammonite that he may see and know that, I'm sorry, that he may see and know him that despised the house of Israel <clears throat> and that sent him to us as it were to his death. Then they called Achor out of his house of Uzziah and he was to come and saw the head of Holofernes in a man's hand in the assembly of the people. And he fell down on his face and his spirit fell. But when, he had re but when they had recovered him, he fell at Judah's feet and reverenced her and said, Blessed are you in all the tabernacles of Judah and all the nations which hearing your name shall be astonished. Now therefore tell me all the things that you have done in these days. Then Judah declared unto him in the midst of all the people all that she had done from the day she went forth until the hour that she had spoken unto them. And when she had left off speaking, the people shouted with a loud voice and made a joyful noise in their city. And when Achor had seen all that the Elohim of Israel had done, he believed in Elohim greatly and circumcised the flesh of his foreskin and was joined unto the house of Israel unto this day. And that's what happens when Israel teaches the other nations and they begin to learn about our God. They become convicted and they was like, and they, they'll just say, my God is your God is my God. And they joined forces with us. He circumcised himself. And he was joined into the house of Israel. He, they said even unto this day. You know, to the day. But that meant forever. You know. And as soon as the morning. <clears throat> excuse me. And as soon as the morning arose. They hung the head of Holofernes upon the wall. And every man took his weapons. And they went forth by the bands unto the strait of the mountain. But when the Asherim saw them. They sent to their leaders which came to the captains and tribunes. And to every one of their rulers. So they came to Holofernes' tent and said to him that had the charge of all his things, Waken now our Lord, for the slaves have been bold to come down against us in battle, that they may be utterly destroyed. Think about that. Then went in Bogoas and knocked on the door of the tent, for he thought that he sat, for he thought that he had slept with Judah. But because none answered, he opened it and went in to the bedchamber and found him cast upon the floor dead, and his head was taken from him. Therefore he cried with a loud voice with weeping and sighing and a mighty cry and rent his garments. <clears throat> After he went into the tent where Judith lodged and where he found her not, he leaped out to the people and cried, These slaves have dealt treacherously. 
one woman of the Hebrews has brought shame upon the house of King Nebuchadnezzar. For behold, Holofernes lies upon the ground without a head. When the captains of Asher's army heard these words, they rent their coats, and their minds were wonderfully troubled. And there was a cry and a very great noise throughout the camp. <clears throat> Chapter 15. And when they that were in the tents heard, they were astonished at the thing that was done. And fear and trembling fell upon them, so that there was no man that dared abide in the sight of his neighbor. But rushing out all together, they fled into every way of the plain and of the hill country. They also that had camped in the mountains round about Beulah fled away. Then the children of Israel, every one that was a warrior among them, rushed out upon them. Then sent Uzziah who to Betmo, Meshathim, and Bevi, and Kovi, and Kola, and to all the coast of Israel, such as should tell the things that were done and that all should rush forth upon their enemies to destroy them now when the children of israel heard it they fell upon them with one consent and slew them unto kobe likewise also they that came from jerusalem and from all the hill country for men had told them what things were done in the camp of their enemies and they that were in gilead and in gial gilal i'm, I'm sorry gali Gali, I'm sorry, Galil, chased them with a great slaughter until they were past Damascus and the borders thereof. And the remnant that dwelt in Beulah fell upon the camp of Asher and spoiled them and were greatly enriched. And the children of Israel that returned from the slaughter had that which remained, and the villages and the cities that were in the mountains and in the plain got many spoils, for the multitude was very great. Then Jerusalem I'm sorry. Then Jehoiakim, the high priest, and the ancients of the children of Israel dwelt in Jerusalem, came to behold the good things that Elohim had showed to Israel, and to see Judah, and to salute her. And when they came unto her, they blessed her with one accord, and said unto her, You are the exaltation of Jerusalem. You are the great glory of Israel, and you are the great rejoicing of our nation. You have done all these things by your hand. You have done much good to Israel, and Elohim is pleased therewith. Blessed be you of El Shaddai, Yahuwah, forevermore. And all the people said, So be it. And the people spoiled the camp the space of 30 days and gave unto Judith hollow furnaces tent and all his plate and beds and vessels and all his stuff and she took it and laid it on her mule and made ready her carts and laid them thereon it sound like they uh you know what they did it said they spoiled the camp or like what people doing today it's another word they, they, they looted the enemy's camp because they had completely taken over and they took everything. I'll read it again. And the people spoiled the camp the space of 30 days and they gave unto Judah Holofernes' tent and all his plate and beds and vessels and all his stuff. And she took it and laid it on her mule and made ready her carts and laid them thereon. Then all the women of Israel ran together to see her and blessed her and made a dance among them for her. And she took branches in her hand and gave also the women that were with her. And they put a garland of olive among her maids that was with her and she went before all the people and danced leading all the women and all the men of israel followed in their armor with garlands and with songs in their mouth last chapter y'all then judith began to sing this thanksgiving in all of israel and all the people sang after her this song of praise and judith sang Begin unto my Elohim with timbrels, sing unto my Adonai with cymbals, tune unto him a new song, exalt him and call upon his name, for Elohim breaks battles. For among the camp in the midst of the people, he has delivered me out of the hands of them that persecuted me. Asher came out of the mountains from the north. He came with ten thousands of his army, and the multitude whereof stopped the torrents, and their horsemen have covered the hills. He bragged that he would burn up my borders and kill my young men with a sword, and dash the sucking children against the ground, and make my infants a prey, and my virgins a spoil. But El Shaddai, Yahuwah, has disappointed them by the hand of a woman. For the mighty one did not fall by the young men, neither did the sons of the titans smite him, nor a high giant set upon him. But Judah, the daughter of Merari, weakened him with the beauty of her countenance. 
for she put off the garment of her widowhood for the exaltation of those that were oppressed in Israel and anointed her face with ointment and bound her hair and tired and took a linen garment to deceive him. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Her beauty took his mind prisoner and the fashion passed through his neck and the Persians quaked at her boldness and the Medes were daunted in her hardiness. Then my afflicted shouted for joy and my weak ones cried aloud, but they were astonished. These lifted up their voices and they were overthrown. The sons of the damsel have pierced them through and wounded them as fugitives children. They perished by the battle of Yahuwah. I will sing unto Yahuwah a new song. O Yahuwah, you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength and invincible. It never seems to amaze me with what's going on in the world what we end up happen to be reading like we don't like skip to it based on but we just continue in our flow of reading and it seems like what we're reading we can actually see happening now like think about what's going on now like so many people are completely missing it and especially the ones who have been in the church they're missing the very thing that they have been looking for all their lives because they can't see it. They don't read it, so they don't recognize it. Okay. Verse 12. The sons of the damsels have pierced them through and wounded them as fugitives' children. They perish by the battle of Yahuwah. I will sing unto Yahuwah a new song. O Yahuwah, you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength and invincible. Let all creatures serve you, for you spoke and they were made. You did send forth your spirit and created them, and there is none that can resist your voice. For the mountain shall be moved from their foundations with water. The rock shall melt at melt as wax at your presence yet you are merciful to them that fear you for all sacrifice is too little for a sweet savor unto you and all the fat is not sufficient for your burnt offering but he that fears Yahuwah is great at all times woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred Bruh, let me underline that i read it again verse 17 Woe unto the nations that rise up against my kindred. Yahuwah Sabah Wote will take vengeance on them in the day of judgment, in putting fire and worms in their flesh, and they shall fill them and weep forever. Now as soon as they entered into Jerusalem, they worshipped Yahuwah, and as soon as the people were purified, they offered their burnt offerings and their free offerings and their gifts. Judith also dedicated all the stuff of hollow furnace, which the people had given her, and gave the canopy which she had taken out of his bed chamber for a gift unto Yahuwah. So the people continued feasting in Jerusalem before the sanctuary for the space of three months, and Judith remained with them. After this time, everyone returned to his own inheritance, and Judith went to Beula and remained in her own possession, and was with and was in her time honorable in all the country. And many desired her, but none knew her all the days of her life. And if you don't know what that means, that means many men desired to take her as a wife, to sleep with her, to have sexual relations with her, it said, but none knew her all the days of her life. After that, Manasseh, her man or her husband, was dead and was gathered to his people. But she increased more and more in honor and waxed old in her man's house, being a hundred and five years old, and made her maid free, so that she died in Beula, and they buried her in the cave of her man Manasseh. And the house of Israel lamented her seven days. And before she died, she did distribute her goods to all them that were nearest of kindred to Manasseh, her man, and to them that were nearest of her kindred. And there was none that made the children of Israel any more afraid in the days of Judah, nor a long time after her death. All right, beautiful people. And we are finished with the book of Judah. TC, you just came in and we just finished the reading, girl. All right, y'all. I ain't gonna hold y'all up today. I ain't gonna say nothing today. We're just gonna go right to the blessing, right? Which is found in Numbers chapter 6. Today is Monday, June 1st, 2020, day 161, and we read the remaining chapters of Judah. We read 13, 14, 15, and 16, and the blessing is, <laughs> you, can, it, you can catch the replay, TT. 
And uh, the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. I love y'all. And I'll see y'all bright and early in the morning. 7.15. It was a little late today because I had to take care of some things this morning. So that was our latest reading we've done in a while. So bright and early in the morning, 7.15. Peace.